The Sad Story, a short story. I had a friend named Han, and he was a good friend who taught me many things in regards to reality, and some things in the life are truly real. There are many things in life that are fun and exciting, but even these things must correlate with those things which are also true. And most things which are true in the life are sobering. The great leveling, that which is the human experience, that leads us to the meaning of life, also includes pain. Therefore, pain is real, because pain must correspond to that which is true. But pain also has a purpose. There is angst. And angst, as my friend Hans said, can be false, based upon our perception. But if we have a false perception of the world and of the life, then our angst can also be false. But there is a life marked by pain, and only Jesus, as my friend Hans said, understood true pain and true loneliness in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus endured temptation in the Garden of Gethsemane, yet he also interceded for us. This is why Jesus is worthy of his kingship. Jesus understands his people and the cup of reality that his people must also drink. For to endure, we must drink until the dregs are dry, and the communion cup must always be filled to the brim. God gave him whole self. God gave his whole self. There is no half-hearted fellowship with God. The life that we live must be lived to the fullness in the reality of eternity we share, and this is through Christ himself. Now my friend Han also said the beginning of this sobering almost always begins with sadness, and he told me what is called the sad story. I will share this story with you now. There was a girl named Dina, whom Han and another friend of hers named Romy. They were both in prison, and when the long dark winter came, where the snow fell and never melted, and all the trees froze with their leaves fully intact, and where the animals left and they did not return for a while. This was the country that Dina and Romy became good friends. And Dina and Romy became good friends until Romy became sick. And Dina said, I will draw you to remember your youth. No one will forget your youth. And when the dark winter is finally over and the trees regain their, regain their exuberance again, and when the leaves become verdant, and the squirrels chase after their tails again in the forest. None shall forget your youth, and the whole world will talk of your beauty. Romy agreed, and she told Dina, Dina, do not let them forget us. When the winter was dark and the candles were lit every night, in order to keep the shadows away from the windows. Romy thought she heard a bird whisper, and she looked to the window when the candle was lit, and there the bird also sang to her these words. God is real, his, mu his music is real, and soon the winter will be over and closed, and the new beginning will shine brighter. You have a beautiful purpose, and there is a glorious plan for your life. Dina had a dream, and she dreamed of music. <clears throat> and Dina only remembered words. Those words were, you have a beautiful purpose, and there is a glorious plan. Dina drew the face of Romy before Romy suffered illness. Romy was a beautiful girl who passed in her youth, but Dina remembers her face, her very lovely face. Dina could not see Romy when she passed to the land without winter, but still, the painting of Romy is locked away for no one to see. Dina also told my friend Han, before she died, Han, we must get the painting of Romy. Romy's youth must be remembered. Beauty must be remembered. Now Han worked his whole life to get the painting of Romy back from the hands of evil men, but he never saw this come to fruition. And I finally had a conversation with Han before he passed, and Han said to me before his, before his passing, this painting of this young woman with the black hair and dressed in farm girls, in farm clothes, must be preserved or the world will forget. We cannot let the world forget the beauty of Romy, just as Dina has told me. If we forget beauty in the image which God has given to us all, all is lost, and the end will begin. I asked Han upon his deathbed many questions about reality, and about sadness and about truth, and Han replied, We've spoken at length on these things, 
Think of these things in your mind, but do not let them ferment or ruminate for long. Now we must press on to those things which soever are lovely, those things which soever are honest, those things which are worthy of the just cause which fills our hearts. For though our faces are dirty, our hearts and our minds will remain strong. And we must think of those things which are worthy of praise. Now let us think of these things, and let us flourish within the life Christ has given us in the fellowship of his God and his Father. If we have Christ, we have beauty beyond relief. I listen to the words of Han, and I often wonder about the painting of Romy. I asked Han before he passed, when the leaves turned green, and the birds sang many songs, and the squirrels chased their tails around the, chased their tails around the trees. Han? Yes, my dear friend, I am still here. And I asked my friend Han, why is the beauty of Romy so captivating? Why must her story be told? Why is she so beautiful and why is the painting so important to the world? Why must this painting be shared with the world? And Han then told me one more story before he passed into the land where there is no winter.